Hey guys, welcome to Light Science Studios. I'm Sam Terrell and this is Photoshop Fives. Alright, welcome back guys and today we are going to be talking about something that has been asked of me to demonstrate for so long and by so many people. We are going to be talking about how to create an image presentation in Photoshop. Now a presentation when done correctly can enhance an image and make it just give it that extra little something uh, to, to make a, a great image even more beautiful. It gives it a nice display case to exist within. Now the mistake that most people make is they go too far with it. They use colors that don't complement the image or that even worse, they use something that will distract from the image. And the key with any image presentation is to make sure that your presentation is never distracting or detracting from the image itself. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the image here. You're gonna follow along and I'm gonna show you the easiest way to make a simple presentation that works every time. All right guys, so here we are. We have an image that a lot of you might recognize from a recent video I did from a tool series that I uh, did some light paintings of. We're gonna add a presentation to this image. Now, let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna be choosing two different colors. We have over here our color palette. We have our foreground and background colors. And first of all, if these colors are not black and white, let's just change this one, you can always change it back to its default black and white by hitting the D button. Hitting that D button will change those back to your default and then you can use the X button just by hitting the X key to switch back and forth between your foreground and background colors. Now, we're gonna choose two different colors. One is going to be the color of our matte our image mat that is the uh, surface on which the image sits. And then we're gonna use another color for our key line. And the key line is what gives, uh, confines the image within its space, okay? It gives finality to where the image exists and starts and stops. Okay, so here we go. We wanna choose colors that are in uh, this image. And I should start off by saying that this was actually uh, introduced to me by a gentleman named Michael Timmons, fantastic photographer has a lot of great educational material if you are a PPA member on PPA EDU and he demonstrates this same technique in a video on PPA EDU. So be sure to check out all of the information that he has to share. All right, so we're gonna choose two different colors. Our first color is going to be our matte color. It's gonna be the base color and we want this to generally be the darker of the two colors. Now the exception to that would be if we are using a high key image in which most of the tones within the image were brighter, then we'd want the matte to be bright and light and we'd want the key line to be darker. But in this case, since this image is mostly dark, we're gonna use a darker matte and we're gonna use a lighter key line. So I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna hit the I key. The I key brings up my eyedropper and I'm gonna choose a darker color from the shadow area of this wood. And looking over here, it looks pretty dark. It might even look black to some of you, but if we click on it, you'll see that it's actually right in the, the, the middle of the orange color tones um, and a little bit higher luminosity than black. And that's perfect, that's what we want. Now we're gonna switch that by hitting our X key, switch that to the background, and we're gonna choose a color for our foreground and we're gonna go a little bit higher in the shadow area, just to a little bit brighter place. That looks a little too bright. I'm looking at the difference between these two colors here and I don't want a huge difference. I'm gonna use um, just a little darker and that's a little bit better. Okay, now while we're doing this, I'm going to be creating an action. I'm gonna show you how to create this action because what that action is gonna allow you to do is actually put this type of presentation on any image in the future with a click of a button. It's gonna make it very easy. Now before we get to making the action, we do wanna make sure our image is sized appropriately because even though you could do this with any size image, it's going to look best um, with a certain size of image. Now we're gonna go up to our image and our image size. I always have my images at 4,000 pixels in the, on the longest edge. And that's because I do a lot of image competition. If you're not doing image competition, it doesn't really matter. You can size it to whatever you want. But the important thing to uh, remember when it comes to this specific presentation that I'm showing you is it's going to work best when you have the equivalent of 4,000 pixels on the long edge and 300 PPI of resolution. So we can see that when we do that, it actually gives us an image size 
of, if you go to the inches, 13.3 inches and 8.89 in this case on the height. Okay, so as long as you're working in inches and you your image is roughly around the 13 inch mark on the long edge, then this presentation is going to look great. Again, it doesn't have to be 13 inches. It can be bigger or smaller, but it will affect the relative size of the presentation that we're going to apply. All right, so let's go ahead and press OK. And now we're going to start creating our action for this. And we're going to go here, create a new action. I'm going to call it Matt Demo. And we'll keep it in default actions. That's fine. All right, so here we go. We're recording our action. And the first thing we're going to do is go up to the image and we're going to go to canvas size. Canvas size, we, are wanna may we, would we do want to make sure we are in inches and we want to make sure this button that says relative is clicked so that we start with zero. Now we are starting with our first key line and we are going to make sure this says foreground. We want this to be on the lighter of the two colors. We're going to type in 0 0.025 in both boxes. 0 0.025 and we're going to hit OK. Now you might not have seen anything happen. But if we zoom in here, you will see that in fact, there was just a little tiny line made of the color that we've chosen for our foreground color here. All right, now we're gonna back out. You're gonna see that more here in just a second. We're gonna go back up to image size, sorry, canvas size. And this time we're gonna switch from foreground to background. And we're gonna put one inch in each of these, one inch width, one inch height, and press okay. Now you see how a big difference and you can kind of see the difference in tonality or between that matte color, the darker color and that lighter key line color now. Okay, we're gonna go back to image, canvas size, switch it back to foreground and again, zero or 0 0.025. Here again, 0 0.025 and hit okay. You might not have seen the change but we're gonna do it again and you'll definitely see it here. We're gonna go canvas size now again background color once again and two inches this time two inches on the width two inches on the height and press ok now that's our finished presentation and you can see that it creates a presentation based on the rule of thirds we have one third starting uh, between the first two key lines and then two thirds of matte outside the key lines and it gives this nice space for this image to exist within and that's the point it's also almost an extension of the main color palette of the image, which is also what we are aiming for. Because if we were to use colors or tones that were way off of the average of this image, it would draw our eye to the outer edges and we don't want that to happen. So now we have our action recorded and we can, we're gonna do it this with different colors and we're gonna do it with incorrect colors so you can see the difference in how using too bright of colors and, and wrong matte colors and key line colors really takes away from the image instead of enhancing it. So what we're going to do is go to our history, go back to image size when we have it the right size. And now I'm going to choose colors that are just completely wrong. Uh, we're actually going to go blue. We'll do a, a light blue. And then we're going to switch to the background. And we're going to do a, just a greenish yellow. We'll do a darker greenish yellow. Okay, so we have colors that are completely not complementary to this image, and I'm actually going to keep the darker color on the foreground. If you see in the darker color on the foreground here, that's going to be our key line color. The lighter blue is going to be our matte color. Now from here, I've chosen our colors. All I have to do now that we have our action is find it here, matte demo, and hit play. And when I do that, bam, instantly gives us our presentation, as easy as that. You know, you'll see that is quite the distracting presentation. You can't help but just look at the mat because it's so bright and so completely different from anything within the image. And we can do the same thing if we switch the colors. I'll show you. We'll go back. We can switch these two colors, hit the X key. And now the blue will be the key line. The green will be the matte color. We'll go back to our actions, hit play on matte demo and bam. Now you see how they switch, still just as distracting. So we're not going to want to use those. All right, let's go back again using the correct colors. Whoops, go back to image size. All right, we're going to find some good colors. 
from the image itself, we're gonna pull a dark color from the shadow area, that'll be our matte, and then a little bit lighter color. Now, you don't wanna go too light. I wanna show you, if you were to choose like this white or even this red from the, the button, you might say, well, that's part of the image, why wouldn't it work? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So we've got the darker shadow color from the wood and the bright reddish pink color from the button of the sander. We're gonna go ahead and run our demo. And you can see that while this is much better than what we had with the green and blue, it's still very distracting because that key line is so bright, you can't help but look at it. And we don't want to look at the presentation. The presentation, again, is there only to give a space for which the image to exist in. We don't want to be looking at it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and choose a lighter color. And it, this is the nice part about having this action. It makes it easy to play around and try different colors and tones so you can hone it into exactly what you want. All you have to do is go back in your history, say, oh, this color, I like the color maybe, I like the color, but it's too bright. So we're just gonna bring it way down in tonality, down here, maybe about right there. That's already looking better between those two. We'll hit the play button on our action, and there you have it. That is much nicer, it's not distracting, it keeps me within the image, it gives a nice display case for this image to rest on, and enhances the image overall. That's it for today, guys. Please subscribe and like this video so you can stay updated on all the future Photoshop 5 videos. I'm going to be putting out at least one per week. And please leave comments on what you want to learn here in Photoshop. It could be how to use a certain tool or how to do a certain technique. Leave me a comment below and you might see it in an upcoming video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. We'll see you next time.